Hey, everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by SoundCloud Studios. Visit online at SoundCloudStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. SoundCloud Studios is the answer. SoundCloud Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at SoundCloudStudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia. Available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews and even loved and endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and Manilis. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 40 podcast platforms heard in over 100 countries, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music, and now being heard on HamiltonRadio.net. Diamonds FM, Oldies Radio, and a few networks coming soon near you. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Wagner Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies. We also got some baseball gear for for the baseball season and some great gifts 24 7 amazon.com and check out the mike weiner show podcast and for more great gift ideas go to amazon.com slash mia molson zia for great books like missing once and wrinkles also cool merchandise like t-shirts pot sockets hoodies phone cases and more amazon.com slash mia molson zia check it out today i'll support the mike weiner show on anchor fm hey pal the mike weiner you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the mike weiner show Make sure you do so today. We're here with a terrific gentleman who transitioned from playing in Buffalo, New York, alternative rock bands to performing live theater for kids in 03. And his song, The Elephant Song on YouTube in 07, led up to 100 million worldwide views for videos, later covered by Susha and later signed to uh, BMG Music Group, one of the uh, few um, artists of his genre to do so. He's been featured naturally on PBS Kids, Sirius XM, Fox and Friends, The Today Show, and also uh, one of the um, films, Life as We Know It. And uh, he's had some um, a number of releases throughout the years, like Kid in the Mirror, Monkey Business, Snow Day, Snail's Pace, which uh, won quite some awards. We'll uh, talk about that, Bubble Wrap, and um, also a brand new album all called The Magic Beans, which is a psychedelic art rock for kids and families. And live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studio somewhere in the Pacific Northwest called Walla Walla, Washington. Say it 10 times fast, kids. The amazing, multi-talented singer-songwriter with the brand new album, Magic Beans, Eric Herman. Eric, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Wow, what an intro. Hi, Mike. It's great to be here from Walla Walla, Washington. The town's so nice, they named it twice. <laughs> Yes, I think that'd be a great kid song as well, too. I think we can uh, make something like that, too. So <laughs> you transitioned from playing in Buffalo, New York, uh, playing a number of alternative rock bands to performing live theater for kids back in 03. And you also um, had a song on YouTube, which was in its infancy in 07, called The Elephant Song, which led up to 100 million uh, worldwide views for the videos, later covered by Shusha. And later you got signed to uh, BMG Music Group, one of the few, um, you know, artists of your genre as well too along with the wiggles and uh quite others you've been featured nationally in pbs kids sirius xm fox and friends at the day show also you're part of life as we know it and you also had a uh, kid in the mirror monkey business snow day snails page which uh you uh won some awards for and uh also um incredibly spaced out and you just have a, a bunch of um awards and accolades to talk about that but most importantly You've got the Magic Beans we'll discuss. It's psychedelic art rock for kids and families. And um, if you want to play maybe a couple later on, that's fine. Plant some beans out there and hopefully they'll grow. And uh, before we get into all that, Eric, tell us how I first got started. Uh, started as doing go, kids' go, music. Um, go, going to the Wayback Machine. I got oh, started. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, um, growing up, uh, I always we had a piano in our house and i like to go over and make up little tunes and things play uh da 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 you know just little pieces of music that i could figure out um and then i was 
told to take piano lessons, as many kids mm -hmm. are at a certain age, <laughs> and suddenly that wasn't fun anymore. You know, it was. I, I have this image in my mind, and it's an exaggerated image, but you know, I'm inside practicing piano and I look out the window and my friends are outside playing baseball or football, you know, <laughs> that kind of mm -hmm. thing. But something about the the formality of the lessons and everything just, I didn't like that. I like to just play, you know. And, um, but when I turned 13, I, by this point, I had started to listen to music that was, you know, wasn't just playing in my parents' Uh, wooden station wagon, which you know was the 1970s standard. <laughs> I love those wooden station wagons. Wood, wood the panel, wood panel yeah. and um, the yes. rich uh, so-called leather or something. It's like I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> we even had the little seat way in the back where that you you could sit and look out the back window. Mm -hmm. But I haven't seen any of that since then. <laughs> but, oh my gosh, uh, I missed that. I'll tell you, I missed that. <laughs> right, right. So anyway, I was you know. 11, 12, 13 started to, oh, hey, listen to music on the radio and, and stuff like that. And kind of got into, you know, I guess what would have been metal at the time, Ozzy Osbourne, um, Iron Maiden, Van Halen, right? And something clicked in my 13-year-old mind, like about a million other kids around the world that, oh, I want to be the next Van Halen. Mm -hmm. Easy, right? You know, so, and I had never played guitar before at all. Uh -huh. So, but, oh yeah, no problem. Uh, anyway, I got a guitar for my 13th birthday and um, it was a really crappy guitar. I don't know. My dad found it somewhere for $50 or something here. <laughs> let's see it. Let's see if he takes to it or anything, you know, and two months later I had played, you know, I'd been playing nonstop and figuring stuff out. And I got a, actually a fairly nice guitar, you know, hundred dollars mm. or something like that. And, uh, and boy, you couldn't, you couldn't, unlike the piano, you couldn't tear me away from the guitar. You know, it, was, <laughs> it, was, it was a stark difference really. Uh, you know, Eric, go practice your guitar. Oh, he's already in his room. He's been playing <laughs> for five hours straight, you know, so playing some Van Hill and Pete Townsend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I gotta say within a year or two, I was playing Van Halen music, I was able to, you know, to, oh, I'm, he is not some immortal deity. He's a human being who just spent a lot of time uh, practicing guitar. And, and uh, <laughs> what do you know, that kind of works. And then at a certain point, um, playing all the tricky stuff van halen you know i i i do still think he's a tasty player you know i i, I think he's great across the board but something happened where i realized there was always somebody who could play faster or trickier there's always uh, something Ingve melmstein i don't know if you know who that is mm -hmm. I, yeah yeah i remember i think he was um he, he was like either before uh, eddie van halen or just kind of creeped in somewhere around I, there so i think it was I, a I little bit that. after maybe the early 80s and he he did kind of a, a classical based metal paganini almost on mm -hmm. guitar and and it was just like phenomenal flowing stuff and and as soon as i heard that i was like ooh, i gotta i gotta learn this now and i remember spending i don't know how many hours to learn a piece of one of his solos wow. right and 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 at a certain point realizing you know what i i i don't think i can do this i don't think i can play what he's playing and and I also realized an important thing that I didn't want to, because around that same time, I was starting to hear things like Pink Floyd or David Bowie or the Beatles. I mean, I heard the Beatles in the station wagon growing up, right? Mm -hmm. And I right. just never, okay, yeah, Beatles, yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> but age 13 and, you know, other factors involved, uh, now I'm hearing the Beatles. I'm hearing the songs. I'm hearing what it means. I'm hearing melody and harmony and, and just what's what so brilliant about them. And and going back to Pink Floyd, realizing that that David Gilmore, uh, Pink Floyd's guitar player, could say more. He could communicate more with 10 notes than Ingve Melmstein could with 10,000 notes. Really? You know, at, at least as I perceived it. Mm -hmm. You know, there, it, it just, you know, um, 
saying saying more while doing less. <laughs> you know. A anyways, my my focus musically shifted on instead of trying to be some, you know, uh, the next guitar hero or whatever, um, to writing songs and and using guitar more as a a tool in service of the song. You know. Mm -hmm. So I, I still love playing guitar. I still try to, you know, to me, it's, it's still something I, I, I try to hone and, and, and approach in different ways and new ways, but it's always, it's more of like painting, mm -hmm. like painting a picture with, with notes and music, as opposed to trying to impress you or something, you know, it's, it's much more personal. Mm -hmm. And that that change all happened around age 15 after playing for a couple of years. You're talking about some of the guitars as well, too. Two of the guitars I thought just came to mind was Steve Hackett from Genesis and Steve oh, Howe yeah. from Yes. And of course, Absolutely, you, know, yeah. you know, Steve Hackett did in 5-4 with the Firth of Fifth. And they said that is the most <laughs> difficult solo they could accomplish. And Steve Howe, you listen to stuff, it's like, how does how does a heck he do it? You know, <laughs> that sort of thing. So. Uh, yes and rush were, were big influences of mine too but uh you mentioned five four i gotta tell you the elephant song is in five four. Oh, really okay well you know what <laughs> what what we'll, we'll talk that about and that. Uh, mission impossible right oh yeah dun, dun, mission dun, impossible dun, dun, dun. yeah 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 <laughs> you've got 10 seconds to hear this and of course we'll uh, talk about the elephant song in 10 seconds but it's gonna be more than that but first you listen to the mike Wagner show at the mike Wagner show.com powered by sonic web studios Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all he needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Whitener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews and Eve Eva and George by Howard's Lovers, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for it goes missing by me and Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at the Mike Show.com on over 40 podcast platforms heard in over 100 countries. Take us with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. Also on HamiltonRadio.net, Oldies Radio, Diamonds FM, and more. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show merchandise at the Mike Show.com. And you can also uh, check out the merchandise by Mia Molson Zia on Amazon.com for great books, gifts, and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. Check it out today. I'll support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, the Mike Widener Show.com. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Widener Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with a terrific gentleman who is a singer songwriter who transitioned from playing in alternative rock bands in Buffalo, New York, to performing live theater for the kids in 03 here on the Mike Widener Show. And one of them, is the elephant song, which was featured on YouTube. We talked about being five, four, I guess that took more than 10 seconds. It just kept saying, don't blow the tip up here like Mission say. Impossible. <laughs> 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 All right, and before we talk about the elephant song, uh, you've been playing a Buffalo with some alternative rock bands and um, tell us about that. And, and, and tell us about the transition going from alternative rock over to uh, performing live theater for kids. You know, just how'd you transition to that? Yeah, uh, well, as a teenager and into my 20s, I was in several uh, Buffalo area bands and um, rock bands, uh, alternative rock bands, progressive rock bands, jam band, it, it kind of whoever would have me. Um, and that was a lot of fun. It was a great time. And um, uh, it was around 2002 or so, um, I was doing more singer songwriter kind of things original songs uh coffee shop performances that that sort of thing and my wife uh my first wife we we lost her in, in 2013 roseanne uh she was always interested in working with kids in some way but mm. she didn't push me that direction it was actually several other people around the same time uh who all mentioned hey you know what 
have you ever tried performing music for kids? It just occurs to me, I've said this story many times, maybe Roseanne put them up to this. Hmm. <laughs> just, I've never thought of that before. But there were like three or four different people unrelated to each other directly. For example, my brother-in-law, Jim, uh, he, he's an elementary school uh, gym teacher. And one day around that same time, he, he says, hey, Eric, I, some guy came into school and performed a school assembly you know, with music and everything, you, I think you could do something like that and, you know, make a living doing that. And, and I, so he was one of four or five people around the same time. I, I remember it, it felt kind of strange that um, circumstances or, or influences seemed to be pushing me a certain direction to work with kids. And I mean, I love kids, but um, I had never thought of that before. I, I, my perception at the time of playing music for kids was that I would have to be like Barney or something. Mm, yeah, the, yeah, dress up like a purple dinosaur and sing I love you. <laughs> now, I, I have done goofy stuff over the years that I'm not proud of, but I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be Barney, right? Mm -hmm. And, and I, Barney is great for one and two-year-olds. Like, it's not anything against Barney or the idea of Barney, but I didn't want to do that. And I, I don't know why I even had that perception because I, I grew up listening to Schoolhouse Rock and, and Sesame Street. And Electric I remember that. Yes. Yeah. A lot of great kids music, but I guess by the, by that point, the nineties, two thousands, I was out of the loop. I, for one thing, I was an adult and I just, I didn't think that there was a thing called music for kids per se. You know, I thought it was, um, I thought it was just all Barney and that, and that kind of thing. <clears throat> But uh, I went to Buffalo area libraries and I noticed, oh, you can take out CDs and cassettes of all kinds of things. And they had a whole section for music for children. And I said, all right, I'll, I, I had big giant stacks that I would take <laughs> out of there. And it was really illuminating and uh, wonderful to realize how many uh, great performers there were, people doing interesting character stuff. Uh, different genres of music that that's what really appealed to me I, you know I like to just go wherever songs lead me or ideas flow and and uh, maybe it's a rock song maybe it's folk maybe it's classical or country who knows right mm -hmm. and, and I realize you can do all of that uh, kids don't really have a bias to, towards music their parents do and you know, so they do a little bit right but but they're also really, really open to all kinds of things. And, and um, once I realized that I could do that, as long as the, the words connect to, to kids in some way or have you know, some kind of interaction or some, some kind of story or something, then I realized, oh, this could be really fun. Uh, and, I, and I don't have to be Barney. You know, there were, <laughs> there were, there were contemporaries of mine who are still doing this, uh, Ralph's World, Justin Roberts, Trout Fishing in America, and they had already been doing it for a few years before that point. And they, they kind of helped, um, you know, pave the way or, or make me realize, oh, this could be this could be really fun. Hmm. It, it sounds like a lot of fun, too. And uh, your first one, the elephant song, which uh, which you put on YouTube back in 07, it wound up to like 100 million views worldwide. And um, tell us more about the elephant song. I want to inspire you to write it. <laughs> well, so. Um, we, I did not intend to write the elephant song the way it ended up being a, a silly song for kids. Um, I, I'm going to play just a little bit of it as a, as a reference. So, sure thing. And, and you can count the meter if you want. Elephants, I like elephants. Elephants, I like elephants. I like how they swing through trees. Elephants. Uh, and then there's a little kid who interrupts. No, they don't. They don't swing through trees. That's a that's a monkey. And I'm like, oh, right. I meant to say monkey. Sorry. And then I go monkeys. I like monkeys. I like how they swim in the ocean. I like and etc. Right. So um, what happened was Roseanne and I were watching PBS, uh, some documentary about elephants. And uh, I 
I should, I'd be curious if I could find this somewhere on PBS archives. But anyways, it was about these two elephants that uh, grew up together when they were young and they were very close. There was footage of them running around and, and frolicking as elephants do, right? Mm -hmm. And um, they had separate camera crews or, or people that, that followed them and every few years uh, would get some footage of them because each of them went a different direction. One went to a zoo somewhere different part of the world and one of them went to uh i believe a circus right wow traveling circus and and for i want to say 15 or 20 years it was a very very long time and then at some point they brought these two elephants back together again huh and they knew each other and they w just were hugging on each other and and frolicking and, and having just a wonderful time again right and it was a really sweet thing to see, you know, that they still, after all that time, recognized each other and there was some, some connection there, right? And that's what inspired me <laughs> when, when we watched that. And I, I was going to write a very, a very deep and meaningful, uh, heartfelt song, right? And I, the music all came pouring out. But the words were totally different. It was like, long time missed you so much finally got these chains off of me all this time waiting for your touch something something i don't remember it but the the thing is i never got farther than that with the lyrics i had one little verse uh, and it, it wasn't, again, it wasn't going to be about elephants. It was going to be about, I don't know, a metaphor for relationships or something. It wasn't going to be a kid's song, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I couldn't get any farther with the lyrics. I kept trying and I had all this music. And, I had, and then one day Roseanne is walking by the room and she hears me playing that music again. And she knows what I'm working on. I've been working on that elephant thing from a few weeks ago mm -hmm. and jokingly mockingly i might add she starts singing elephants i like elephants just completely random as a joke and, and I, I i think i was like quiet i'm working on this <laughs> don't, don't interrupt don't interrupt me with that oh ha 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 funny funny anyway the next day i'm driving to work and I have a CD with a demo of the music and I'm trying to sing along in the car, trying to come up with ideas still mm -hmm. for that, that song. And I start singing it that same way. Elephants, I like elephants. And then in one of those things that you never know why this happens, but it just came out of the ether or whatever. I got to that next part. I like how they swing through trees. Like it, it wasn't even a conscious thought per se. It just kind of came out. And I remember it startled me. I was like, wait a minute, what? That's ridiculous. <laughs> and, and then, oh, light bulb. Because, oh, Roseanne and I, we'd been talking about maybe doing songs for kids. And like in, suddenly in that moment, there was that connection that I realized maybe this could be a thing. And I went home that night and in five minutes, Roseanne and I wrote the rest of that song. I mean, wow. it's, really, it, it's, it's just, an, it's just the animals repeating, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like, you know, we're writing uh, Tolstoy or something, but <laughs> in any case, we, we, we finished writing that and, Oh, here's a song. Here you go. Here's something. How is it going to go over? Are people going to, are the kids going to like it? Or are they going to think I'm just an idiot? Mm -hmm. it turns out it was both, both things. Nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, that worked out beautiful. I mean, it led to 100 million worldwide views and um, later covered by Susha as well, too. And uh, you, you got signed to a BMG, you know something? It worked out for the very, you got covered yes. by uh, quite a number yes. of people and um, you yeah. got signed as well, too. So it worked out beautiful. I got to say this, I think Susha was one of the, um, another um, kid's, um, <laughs> you know, performer as well, too. Yeah, she yeah. was. Yeah, um, Argentina. Uh, 
right regular artists and she was big out there too and mm-hmm. everything else oh, yeah. and, um, <laughs> and, and of course you know speaking of animals and everything you also had a uh, monkey business you also had uh, snail's pace which by the way won the uh, pearl award and um also the parents choice for what a ride and uh party animal and more and um you won some awards and uh tell us about some of the other music and um other albums before we talk about the magic beans this is great well yeah i so you know elephant song that was the first song we i i i decided I should try some gigs, right? Uh, and uh, coming up this December will be the 20th year anniversary of the first gig that I did as Eric Herman uh, for kids. And it was just in a coffee shop where I played regularly on a Saturday afternoon. They said, yeah, sure, come in. We'll add, throw some flyers up. And there was about a dozen kids there and their parents. And um, and it was okay, you know, <laughs> like mm-hmm. I learned a bunch of songs from those CDs I took out from the libraries. Some of them were great. Kids loved them. And some kind of you lose their attention. It was a good learning experience. But again, that elephant song was the one original song I did. And everyone loved it. Like the kids reaction was just, whoa, you're crazy. <laughs> you know, it's like they really, and, and I remember thinking, whoa, there's something to this. So the next year we put out the first, we got more songs together. I, I wrote some songs together with Ken Nesbitt, who's a, a, a well-known uh, children's poet, funny poetry author. And we put out an album and that did really well. It, at, at that point, it was, it, the question was, do I keep my day job? And I'll give credit to Roseanne for, uh, try, try to imagine the wife of a fledgling musician telling that fledgling musician I think you should quit your day job with the paycheck and the health insurance and the 401k. Uh, we have a two-year-old daughter and another on another child on the way. I think you should quit that job and we should try to do this music thing. That was wow. her. That was her. And uh, I was the one like, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, 20 years later, she was very, very right. Uh, uh, it was, it's been a ton of fun. And, but that first album uh, made the point, like the crossroads, like I, I have to either do one thing or the other because I, I got more and more requests to come perform at schools or do things. And I couldn't keep taking off days of my, my real job. You know? mm-hmm. So that kind of forced that issue. And then we moved out West in 20, uh, 2004 and um, started full time at that point, and the first few years were scraping by, and and um, you know, and then got some breaks, and and you know, it's since then it's been it's been really good and, and a, a great experience with with ups and downs, you know, mm-hmm. some, some, that's, some tragedies, uh, it, losing Roseanne especially, of course. Mm, yes, I'm very sorry about that, but of course, you know, you won some awards as well too, and. Um, We'll also talk about your um, magic beans as well, too. We'll talk about it in just one minute. You'll listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor, the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author, Mia Molson, The Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We'll be back with the amazing singer-songwriter Eric Herman of Magic Beans after this time. Out. We're back the amazing singer-songwriter, um, from Buffalo, New York, now in Walla Walla, Washington, Eric Herman here on the Mike Wagner Show. And let's talk about your album, uh, Magic Beans, the psychedelic art rock for kids and families. I guess you were kind of uh, call yourselves Eric Herman and the Puppy Dogs. And, um, you, you know, tell us more about that. Or if you want to play one of the songs too, like Merry Go Round or whatever, you know, feel free to do so. Yeah. Um, so Magic Beans is the new album. Uh, my first new album in about six years, I want to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 2016 uh, was the last one. And at this point, there, there was a point when I was putting out about an album every year. And some of that was because I felt I had to. And I, I'm happy to be at the point where I don't feel like I need to. So it's more when I want to or when when something, when enough songs come, come together, enough ideas come together. And that's what happened with Magic Beans. Um, uh, my band and I, uh, Puppy Dog Ben and Puppy Dog Dave, um, we worked on this uh, a ton over the last few years. Um, one, of, one of the positives of COVID, I guess, is we had extra time to you know, <laughs> mix and arrange and record. And, and I, I think we really put uh, a ton of uh, 
I think that shows I, I feel or, or sounds whatever whatever the, the whatever the audio version of that is um, <laughs> excuse me uh the music to me feels very three-dimensional the way we we pan things and arrange things and um and i, I would like to play you the song uh merry-go-round which is um from uh magic beans the the video is available on youtube there's youtube there's five videos out right now uh you can find them uh look up eric herman on on youtube but uh this is called merry-go-round every day every night spinning through dark and light find your place Hold on tight, smile and wave, merry go round. Merry go round. Merry go round. Merry go round. Big and small, here on this turning ball, we are part of it all. Smile and wave, merry go round, merry go round, merry go round. go round, round and round and round, every day you and me, whirling round endlessly, the Milky Way, galaxy, smile and wave. Merry go round. Wow, that was amazing. I loved it. Merry go round. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. That was uh, a bridge diversion. We, oh, we, we extended a bit. Oh, that was <laughs> great. I love that. Tell us more about the song Merry Go Round. What inspired you to write it? Well, um, as a lot of songs come to be, it's it's really a question of just picking up a guitar and and just playing, for me at least, you know. Uh, it's it's not often I have a, a, a thought of an idea and then it becomes a song. Usually I have to just be kind of fooling around. It's, you know, you have to put your fingers on the typewriter to type a book, right? You know, mm -hmm. authors will tell you things don't get written unless you actually just start doing something, right? Ah, and that's, that's really interesting. How, that's really how it, it was uh, for Merry Go Round, where um, uh, those it's really it's such a simple song. There's just these two chords. Um, a D and a G major seventh. Uh, there's that one little walk down. But anyway, I, I just got in this pattern of these um, playing these two chords. I think I was doing more of a thing like. Merry go round. Ah, and, and, I see. And when I first thought of the idea, it, it, it con the music conjured up the motion of it, I think, it's turning around. And when I thought of, I, I don't know, I think I was in an existential state of mind mm -hmm. or something, just thinking of the earth as a merry-go-round, the galaxy as a merry-go-round, life just goes on, it goes around and around. And I, when I hit on that phrase, it's also kind of like, you can also think of it like a merry-go-round, like have a merry-go-round. So I, I maybe that's I, more of a I, British... I, 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 type way to phrase it or something but. i was just thinking more thought that mary go around mary go around mary go around and yeah. around you know i was thinking about that i said that can be interpreted in many different ways i think that's really creative in what you did with mary go around you know, i was just thinking about it is that your typical mary go around you go to a carnival or a fair or anything got the horses going up and down there's like other versions and uh different perceptions of that this is wonderful i'll tell you so I, I like to I like to try to find things that have different layers or different meanings, but um, a lot of times I don't even 
realize them initially too. But well, so the first time that came to me, I literally played that phrase over and over for about 45 minutes. Oh my God. There we go round. <laughs> loved it so much and and the um i remember telling my my wife kim and a friend of mine or dave from my band i said maybe that's the whole song just over and over merry go round keep it that simple like a, a drone or a mantra right mm, and, yes and yes it, it's the that would have been the bold thing to do but the the songwriter um brain in my head kept saying no you some context a little bit of context <laughs> so i remember the next day I, I told kim all right you know what i think i'm gonna play merry-go-round 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 and then like two minutes into it there's one verse just one verse and then it repeats merry-go-round and then then it became two verses and then it became three lines <laughs> <laughs> it, it's like going around three times over and uh, over and everything else and <laughs> it's like typical merry-go-round he also has some other uh, songs on the album as well you got googly eyes you got stinker science scroller and also mushroom pizza it's got to be yummy uh, for most people <laughs> tell us more about those well, especially mushroom pizza who love pizza <laughs> It's not yummy for me. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm more of a sausage and pepperoni guy. We'll talk about that later, though. So, Well, that's, uh, I mean, the, the um, point of that song is that I hate mushroom pizza so much that I want it, like, destroyed from off the face of the earth. I want, you know, so, and, and the, my band guys, you know, kind of push me to be more be more accepting be more tolerant you know and that's kind of the kind of the under uh under the surface message there right mm -hmm. it, yeah. it, that's that's something as well too of course you got a little monkey business as well too and um you, you know you know just a lot of things and uh where can we find uh magic beans and uh, all your works at eric uh, I should be at all of the usual streaming places spotify apple music all amazon all of that and um uh, there, I, I have hard copies, ancient technology CD. Oh shoot. I don't have one nearby here, but th there are still CDs, compact discs, and some people still want them. You can go to my website, erichermanmusic.com uh, to get those. We certainly will do so. Once again, we're with Eric Herman, singer, songwriter um, with Magic Beans and more here on the Mike Whitener show. And uh, just a few more things as well. What can we expect from you in 2022 and beyond Eric? Well, uh, a couple of things I'm really excited about. We debuted a, a, a brand new stage show this past March at a theater uh, kind of out here this way. Uh, and and it's, uh, we call it a musical, theatrical, magical, and beanical family experience. Oh, wow, okay. Um, and it's kind of like a hybrid between what would be our normal like concert for kids, but there's also interludes and theatrical things. There's, there's, really really cool video projections and a lot of different ideas happening um i i was inspired by um going to vegas uh, several times and seeing the blue man group and the cirque du soleil beatles show and and not that this can compare at and you know in in a slight way to to any of that but it, it did inspire me uh, to want to create uh, a live experience that was more than just just playing songs like there was, uh, you know, bringing in the theatrical background that I, I've had too over the years. Hmm. That's really interesting. Certainly looking forward to that. And who do you consider biggest influence in a career? Uh, as like an artist per se, or it can be any. Yeah. Um, musically speaking, Beatles, Frank Zappa, Kate Bush. Um, and I just like that all three of them have did so many different things. You know, they, at, at least at a certain point the Beatles said oh we're not going to be tied down to just doing she loves you yeah 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 we're going to experiment we're going to do all kinds of different music all kinds of different ideas and and Frank Zappa started from that point <laughs> and went, went a hundred like, million we, different we beat, ways we beat you fat boy nah, nah. <laughs> yeah and and Kate Bush too um uh, you know her first album is sort of conventional like piano singer songwriter but boy does it you know, go off from there in different ways. Um, and I'm also influenced a lot by um, 
you know, people like Weird Al and you know, like comedy and, and things that I that I add to my music and the things that I write. Uh, SNL, Monty Python, you know. Oh, things like my that. favorite Monty Python. We can go yeah. on about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Oh, just uh, smile and wave, like I just sang. You know, <laughs> remember, rem and really the the the. I, I, spoiler alert! I'm giving away the ultimate message, maybe, of the Magic Beans show, is to, to remember what a what a unique thing it is every second of every day that we exist, and uh, this is this is our life. You know, one of my favorite bands, uh, Canadian bands. I don't know if you heard of them. Maybe uh, you're up uh, North Dakota, right? Tragically Hip. Have you heard? I've, them? I've heard Tragically Hip. Yes. Okay. So uh, imagine if REM or the Rolling Stones were extremely Canadian, then you'd have uh, the and they and they they were huge in Canada, like stadiums huge. But they come to the U.S. and play in clubs. You know, it was it was weird. But uh, living in Buffalo, we were connected uh, to their music a lot through the radio. Wow. Anyway, one of my favorite songs of all time is called "Ahead by the Century," and there's the phrase that he says, uh, Gord Downey, the singer. Uh, no dress rehearsal. This is our life. Huh. And, uh, you know, every, every second is a magic bean, uh, smile and wave. This is, this is your chance to, to do what you do. And, uh, don't, don't let anything stop you <laughs> <laughs> no, or try not to anyway, mm -hmm. <laughs> easier I, said I, than done. I was just thinking about when you said smile away, it made me think of that movie, uh, Madagascar, which my kids will love, you know, oh, just smile sure. away, yeah. boy, just smile and wave. And of course, oh, maybe I stole it subconsciously from that. Nah, that's okay. You know what? <laughs> it just made me think of it too, with those penguins as well, too. And, right. um, you know, trying to think about Ma Ma Madagascar, it's like if somebody's in bad mood, you can say, let's watch Mad at NASCAR. So <laughs> and watch them bang it sure. up or so. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> We're here with the uh, singer songwriter Eric Herman of the Magic, you know, with uh, his new release, Magic Beans, here on the Mike Wagner Show. Eric, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you soon. And make sure you keep us up to date, keep in touch, live we'll back, and wish you all the best. And um, just one more thing before we go, would you like to uh, play another song for us? Uh, sure. I will, I will play the title track of Magic Beans. All right. Uh, we will do so. Magic Beans Magic with Beans. Eric Herman here on the Mike Wagner Show. Once upon a time, there were magic beans Thrown away onto the dusty ground Soon a beanstalk was growing all around From those magic beans The magic beans made everything All at once, it wasn't, then it was, came to be, maybe, just because, because they're magic beans. <laughs> magic beans made you, everything you've ever done and seen came from just a tiny magic bean and now you're a magic bean we are made from magic beans the dna is in our genes with ups and downs and in betweens what do you believe it all means for me all just magic beans a story and we write it every minute once upon a time we were in it 
Once upon a time. Amazing magic beans from Eric Herman and the Mike Wagner Show. Great job, Eric. And where can we find all your music at? What's your website? How do people get a hold of you? And uh, how can people uh, purchase your works and uh, check out your latest? Yeah, erichermanmusic.com or just like look up Eric Herman on Google or YouTube. Uh, look for Magic Beans, a stage show where we debuted in March. We're, we're doing another uh, production of it coming up this fall, and we're looking to take it all around the country. Uh, and um, I'm working on some 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 TV show ideas. Um, nothing to report quite yet, but hopefully something going to happen there. Uh, Magic Beans, a, a, a TV show of some kind. Look, maybe on a streaming service near you in the next year or so. We'll see. But uh, uh, erichermanmusic.com, that's really... We certainly would check that out and you got a great thing going. Once again, Eric, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Love to have you back. We wish y'all best. You definitely have a great future ahead of you. Thanks, Mike.